Hey, my soul friends, it's Victoria. I was not planning on doing a video today. Um, as you can see, I'm not really camera ready. I've got no makeup on and my eyes are my eyes of crying, you know, kind of puffy eyes. And although clear, you know, I always say when you have a good cry, go look in the mirror because that's when you'll see your soul the clearest. And so today has been a very weepy raw day for me. And I want to share this with you um, because, as always, I know if I'm experiencing something, there's a great chance that someone out there is experiencing it too. And what's so surprising about this sudden wave of grief, you know, there's a term in grief work that is, um, it's called the sneakers, the sneaker, like a sneaker wave. Like you, you think everything's good, you're looking out at the ocean, it's a beautiful day, and you turn your back for a moment and the wave comes and sweeps you into the sea of sorrow and grief and regret, whatever. I had a mixed bag of things surfacing today. Of course, we're in eclipse season. A lot of emotions can rise up. A lot of shadowy material can rise up. We also have Pluto in retrograde can bring us back to a place that was a deep wound that we hadn't quite dealt with completely. Um, and we are almost, well, we're in the pre-shadow of uh, Mercury retrograde. So reviewing, right? So I was caught off guard because I was reviewing 20 years of a journey of moving from California to Washington State and really was like excited to review 20 years and all this journey and all that I've done while I've been here and experienced like meeting my husband and serving the community and my clients. And yet, instead of feeling joyous and buoyant, I was feeling down and weepy. And so, okay, I was looking, okay, what, what did I regret during this 20 years? But it was something more and it caught me off guard like a, like a sneaker wave. And I thought, of course, and how, how did I miss this? I'm a super aware person. But I looked at the calendar and I realized that is not only is it Mother's Day on Sunday, it's my mother's birthday tomorrow. And so this is a topic I, I, I want to speak about more, you know, to, to, we don't speak about this grief a lot. I'm going to talk about a few griefs that we don't speak about. And one is being a motherless daughter. Um, I'm speaking mostly to my, I have mostly female followers, the motherless daughter. Um, and I am one. My mom died when I was 17, but she really was actually, she was a single mom who was not very present before then. And there was some alcoholism. And yes, it's hard to speak about these things. My mom was an amazing person. She was a compassionate woman and she had a deep, tender soul that I think was too tender for this world. And, um, and sometimes I feel like I follow her in that. And so she died when I was 17. And even though you can tell it's been many years <laughs> since then, and I've done a lot of grief work every once in a while, especially when there's the double, you know, her birthday and mother's day in the same weekend can really stir up a lot. And I, I thought, wow, here I am, you know, no matter how much work I've done with this and grief is, you know, there's no timeline on grief. There's no expiration date with grief. So I want to speak to the motherless daughters out there. It's a very unique experience, and I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about um, mothers who have lost a child, another very difficult grief that happens around Mother's Day. When Mother's Day, and I want to say this, God bless all of you mothers. We do, you deserve more than a day to be celebrated. You do. Without mothers, we wouldn't be here. So I honor you, I love you all, you're amazing. But I wanna talk about these topics that, that come up around Mother's Day for some women who don't have a place to talk about it because we're all in the, the light and fluffy joy of motherhood. And I wanna talk about the shadowy places of Mother's Day, okay? So if this isn't for you, then you can turn off the video and I love you and I send you love and I celebrate you. I'm talking about the grief of Mother's Day for a lot of women. So motherless daughters also, it's not if your mother has died or died when you were younger. Um, motherless or unmothered daughters um, can feel abandoned by their mothers. This can be even more painful. The mother is alive but not present um, due to addiction or narcissism or inability, you know, mental health issues. So 
a motherless daughter is just the experience is hard to explain but I'll do my best in a brief amount of time a daughter who is raised without mothering without nurturing without a positive role model a positive mirror no matter how old you get and how much inner work you've done believe me um, I, I do a lot of inner child work I teach inner child work I'm constantly working with this wound but it's very very hard because you you didn't receive the essential ingredients you needed for your soul recipe that's how I put it essential needs like just and they're simple like I remember one time um, a, a friend's mother took us out and this was I was in my 30s a friend's mother took us out shopping together and she waited patiently as we tried on clothes and oh that looks really cute oh I love that on you I want to buy that for you you know and, and I didn't really have that experience and a lot of motherless daughters do not don't have that feminine touch to help you shape your world I, I thank God for Google I call it anti Google because so much of those gaps in not being mothered I can find the information on the internet thank goodness for that years ago that we didn't have that and there were many things I didn't know and didn't have access to um, that I would just have to sort of imagine or if I was brave enough to ask a friend why do you what you know I noticed you do this and your mom does this with you and what is that for honestly so if there's any motherless daughters out there or you grew up without the feeling of being mothered and nurtured please reach out to me or comment I want to hear your experience those for me again I've healed a lot so this isn't my constant but every once in a while it'll be this awkward I don't know what to do in this scenario I have no reference for this or I'll weep and I'll cry especially in a movie when I see that kind of loving devoted mother and that beautiful expression of a mother that's protective and connected to her child um, and in my shadowy places I go to this if only I had had a very present devoted committed nurturing mother who might I have been um, and so I'm being raw with you today because today's a raw day for me and I know if I'm feeling this thinking this you are experiencing it now I'm, 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 I'm letting all this stuff come out only to say two not only to say but to also say of course we do our healing and of course we celebrate that but you gotta spill out your gut sometimes <laughs> look at what's there feel it heal it and then reconfigure it offer yourself what you need and that is the healing journey of an unmothered daughter or motherless daughter um, we become our own mothers we become our own nurturers we we fill in the gaps of those places that we missed out and it is part of the grief is a feeling of missing out like you know um, you can never replace a mother no matter what I mean I have been fortunate with lots of um, women have stepped in the gap a little bit you know I remember I think well into my 30s I was waiting for someone to adopt me you know is there someone out there who will finish the job for me but nope it was my job to finish so reaching out and sending love to all all of you women out there whatever age your mother died or what whatever age you felt like your mother wasn't there for you I send you love reach out to me for support if you need support um, and I want to say this to you that and then I'll go on to the next grief surrounding Mother's Day um, the we don't talk enough about these issues and so there's there isn't an understanding or sensitivity about it and I remember once opening up to a woman who was actually a therapist but she was sort of an sort of an acquaintance and I was telling her of my deep grief of not being mother not having a mother especially during significant times in my life getting married and you know all those significant times not there um, and she said you sound like a victim and I want to say something about that because it really pissed me off and here's the thing victims have been victimized by life in some way that doesn't make them a victim it it's a vic you know being um, how do I say this to explain it so when something happens to someone in their life yeah they're a victim of something it's some loss some experience um, but it's not that we live from a place of victim because we do our healing work and we become victors for sure but these emotional wounds people do not seem to understand this is why I want to give voice to this if someone had two broken legs 
people are more sensitive to physical injury than they are to emotional injury, it would be like, oh, sensitivity, you, do you need some help in walking? And then they may heal and they still have a limp or their knees hurt or their legs hurt when it's rainy and there's the sensitivity to, you had broken legs, wow, that was hard, you got over it. But people do not understand a broken heart, okay? People do not understand grief, grief because they don't wanna look at it, feel, or, feel it or experience it until it happens to them. So I'm going to stop there with that. I wanted to say that because it's pissed me off for a long time. And when I work with people and they come to me and they, they don't want to talk about their grief because they're afraid of being a victim, how else can you heal? You need to talk about it. You need to bring some light to it. Feel your feelings. Heal, your, heal what you need to heal. Receive what you needed. That's the key. Receiving what we need in the present moment can help us reset the past, okay? Um, and bring our potential and our purpose to the future. Of course, a big part of my purpose is helping healing the wounded hearts out there. I had one, I have one. Sometimes my heart breaks open again and I've got to deal more, do more grief work and do more healing. Mostly, it's, it's expanded with love and compassion and I'm ready to serve. I'm just being real here, okay? So the next grief I wanted to talk about is the grief of a, um, which one do I want to go to? I'm going to go to this one. Childless women. Women who do not have children, and I am one of them as well. Again, I celebrate the journey of motherhood. I have supported many, many women through very, phases, very many phases of their motherhood. I celebrate them. I love you all. But for a childless woman, whether you desired and, and thought you'd be a mother, or maybe you just were clear, I'm not having kids, it's not for me. That could still, we could still be, some of those women could be triggered. I personally did want children when I was younger. I really thought my whole life I was gonna be a mother. And I'm not gonna get into my personal reasons of how or why that didn't happen, but it did not happen. But there are women who choose it's not for them. So I wanna say that there's a grief that arises around Mother's Day for for those of us without kids. And sadly, I want to say it comes from the shaming of other women. Not always, but it's, I, again, I've had this experience and I've had many clients talk to me about experiences like this. I was once at a baby shower and they were talking about kids and this woman turned to me and she literally said to me, you can just excuse yourself from this conversation because you wouldn't understand. You've not had children. You're not a mother. Ow. Wow. Okay. Yes. Maybe. She didn't know my back history, which was my sister had five kids that was very actively involved in mothering. But she didn't know me. She just dismissed, dismissed me because I didn't have kids. So I couldn't understand. Again, that pissed me off. So I'm, I'm bringing my voice forward for anyone out there who's ever had this experience. Yes, I honor the hard work and devotion of a woman who, who births a baby um, and raises a, a child. God bless you. Again, we would not be here without you, right? But a woman who does not have hasn't had the experience of birthing a baby does not mean she's not a mother. And many women who don't have kids deeply, and I'm one of them, resonate with the archetype, something in my mouth, <laughs> I'm like spitting up my anger and my frustration here, um, uh, do resonate with the archetype of the mother. That's not something that you have to do to become it's who you are inherently in your being your body your soul so let's stop that let's stop shaming women who chose not to have children or or weren't able to have children let's honor and lift them up too and don't close the circle of motherhood because they didn't physically bring a baby into the world okay i think this is more of a rant than a talk <laughs> so i really want to hear I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing this because I want to, for a couple of reasons, I want to change the perception of motherhood and I want to honor, I want to expand the honoring circle for women and for grief. We can both hold joy and celebration and our sorrow and our grief and we can do better and we can heal. So, um, hmm. 
I think it's because I don't have any lip balm on my lips and I'm yeah again I'm I I was gonna go put makeup on I was like well that's kind of a uh what's the word I was I'm looking for inauthentic like I I I was literally crying and I was like I gotta do a video should I go put some makeup on no isn't that kind of counterintuitive I'm going to put makeup on to make myself look better so I could feel better. And yes, I know there are a lot of motivational speakers out there that say, if you're feeling down, go put some makeup on, slap some makeup on, just show up, put your big girl panties on and go. I'm not from that mm, consciousness. <laughs> I'm with, be with what is with where you are. Find what you need. Feel your feelings. Honor that. And then... You don't put makeup on and make it better. You, you, you connect to your heart and you heal and let the healing radiate through you. So that's, that's what I want to talk about with, with, um, women, um, childless women. I wanted to go back. I did have a quote about motherless daughters and this is from Hope Edelman. And if you are a motherless daughter, you uh, she speaks specifically to women who, who's, uh, mothers have died. Um, excellent book. And I totally resonate with this book because her mother died when she was 17 as well. So when a, when a daughter loses a mother, the intervals between grief responses lengthen over time. That's true. But her longing never disappears. So true. I can't tell you how many longings I've had. If I wish my mom was here to ask her this or to, you know, to, to learn more about her or to show me how to do certain things. it So the longing never disappears. It always hovers at the edge of her awareness, prepared to surface at any time, like this is what happened to me today, in any place in the least expected ways. I'm remembering now I had lunch with two friends and their moms are just amazing. I got to meet them both and they were sharing about their amazing moms. And that probably started to stir my longing for wish I had my mom longer, wish I had an amazing mom like that. So this is what we do with grief. We track those little cracks in our heart starting to bust open again. Um, so, okay. So back to, let me conclude with, um, you know, celebrating Mother's Day and, and honoring the, the childless women who, you know, still resonate with the mother archetype. And I had a, a friend of mine give me a beautiful card one Mother's Day, and it was something like, I celebrate your mother's heart for you nurture and love and care for people so deeply. And I was like, I felt so seen. Like, I, okay, I'm in the mother's club, you know, even though I haven't birthed a child. So thank, thank, God bless that woman, my friend. And thank you all for shifting your perspective to consider maybe a mother, a childless mother. I mean, woman is a mother. <laughs> and maybe she's not, you know, that's it's just a sensitivity point to be aware of. Um, Okay, now a really hard conversation, and that is um, mothers, whew, okay. take a breath and ground, um, mothers who have suffered the most difficult loss, and that is the loss of a child, the death of a child, and that includes miscarriage, and I'm going to be really, um, I'm going to go really bold here and I'm going to probably offend some of you, but I've worked with a lot of women. <sighs> ah, wow. I have worked with a lot of women who until you understand their stories, you cannot understand who had an abortion and their, that grief is so profound and deep because it is comes with such shame. It's such a deep unspoken grief. So I, I include you here too. Okay. The death of a child is the hardest grief. And around Mother's Day, very difficult. Now, as you know, I haven't birthed children into the world, so why am I so tender with this? Well, my niece, my sister's daughter, who was my goddaughter, um, she was born when I was, let's see, 17, 19. And, uh, I think, or was I young? No, I'm sorry. I was, seven, I was around 18, somewhere around there. Um, because I remember 
fighting with my sister that I wanted to be her godmother. I wanted to, I wanted to be my nephew's godmother, but I was only nine. <laughs> and then, then my nine or 10, and then my next niece came. I wanted to be her godmother, but I was 15. So with Michelle, I got to be the godmother. And um, Michelle passed away. And forgive me, I don't know how many years ago. It seems like yesterday and forever at the same time. So I do can empathize with the loss of a child. And so, and I feel deeply for my sister right now. And so I want to include all of the, the bereaved mothers, the grieving mothers, no matter how long ago, the baby, the child, even your adult child um, left this world and how whatever way they left this world, the grief is real. Um, there's just no tragedy like the death of a child. There's just, there's just none. There's never, there's no ever getting back to normal. I mean, we create a new normal, we create a new life, but there is a significant part of the fabric of our life forever missing. So I w just wanted to acknowledge you. Again, mothers like my sister, you know, I, I want to say this because I remember, I'm remembering these memories of their popping in my head. I want to say this, to, you know, again, there's grief, there's space for grief, and there's still joy and celebration for motherhood, right? Um, my sister had five kids, and I remember, I remember the first time someone asked me, how many nieces and nephews do you have? And it was maybe, maybe six months after Michelle died, and we were out to dinner, um, a big group of people, and I was I like froze. How many do you have? And so I imagine this question to mothers who have had, you know, birth four babies and one child is no longer here. And in my sister's case, five babies and one is no longer here. And I was like, ah, uh, I, uh, and I didn't know what to say. So I left the table and I went in the bathroom and I cried with the reality of that change. And so that was also a sneaker moment, like an unexpected question just ripped right into my heart where that place of what do I do with this? How do I adjust? What do I? So, so that was one of those moments that gave me such compassion for the, the how do mothers, and again, I'm not, God bless the fathers too, but this is for my women because we're coming up to Mother's Day. Um, how does one communicate that. And especially when it's not always welcomed, people don't like to talk about grief. They don't want to talk about the difficulty. And yet we just want to put light and shiny, happy on a, on a day like Mother's Day. And yes, we, we should, and we can, and there's space for that. There's lots of space for that. I'm just inviting you to allow the space for what's underneath that, the things we don't acknowledge, the things we don't speak about. So for instance, um, if you are a mother whose child is no longer in the world, find your way to communicate what that is. Like, oh, how many kids do you have? And, you know, happy Mother's Day. How many kids do you have? Well, if I, if I were my sister, say, well, I, I, I have five children and one is no longer in with us in the physical realm, but I have five children and I'm celebrating my motherhood, but I'm also acknowledging the loss. I think that's important, but we don't do it. I want to say this for if anyone's listening who does not relate to any of this grief, this is for you to understand that grief, people who um, are forever changed by a loss, the loss of a mother, loss of not having children, or the loss of a, a child, uh, uh, their death. Um, we may not speak about it because we don't want to hurt you or upset you. So be aware. If you know a friend who has gone through any of these griefs, be sensitive. And you might say, how is your heart today? Or how are you feeling as we approach Mother's Day? And maybe, you know, honor it all. Honor that there's space for the celebration, there's space for the joy, and there's space for whatever that woman is experiencing. And if it, if there isn't, then she has to struggle with that on her own. 
So that's, I think, what I wanted to say. I was so like pounding on my heart to make a video. Um, you know, I just want to just say to all of you, all of you, as we approach Mother's Day, to honor your own journey of motherhood, whether you have children or don't, um, what even the term mother means to you. Are you still, is there a wound from mothers, a motherhood wound being a mother or your own mother? The mother wound is a big one. Um, and we need to heal for sure, because any wound in mother, in the feminine archetype of mother, um, can impact us in delivering all of our gifts and our purpose because there's an imbalance, right? So I, I speak to you and to your heart, and I hope that my words are healing and find a way. And you know what? I even hope that I busted open your heart and, and you're crying with me, okay? It's important to feel our feelings. I, you know, can't say that enough. In fact, you might want to, you know, just put your hand on your heart. Maybe I should have done this at the beginning and just check in with yourself. How are you feeling? What are you noticing in your body? Is there some grief that's been kind of under the surface that you're allowing space and way that to come forward, to acknowledge, to heal it? Um, those old feelings are, you know, going to come up somewhere. So the more we're present to our heart and where we're at in any given moment, the less those sneaker waves can get us. But they still do. They still do. So what happens when you get a sneaker wave? Again, when I'm demonstrating, when I'm speaking to you, honor yourself, feel your feelings, um, hug yourself. Really just, you know, say to yourself, I've got you. I'm with you. Mother yourself. That's the healing remedy here for all of these wounds is to be your own best mother. Nurture yourself. Love yourself. Let your tears flow. Let them cleanse your wounded heart. Your And, um, and in this broken heart experience, this is where we plant beautiful seeds of acceptance. And I think a broken heart grows so much compassion. I was reminded the other day by someone who was doing an astrology reading for me. And he said, you know, you just need to bring more compassion to yourself. I'm like, yes, I know this. Thank you for the reminder because I had gone off compassion because I went into some default programming. So planting the seeds of restoration and growing the beauty that comes out of the pain. And, you know, some of us have a lot of pain and we have a lot of beauty to bring. And so I'm with you. Bring your beauty. But first, take care of yourself. Honor yourself. Feel your feelings. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to be here for you with my broken, open heart. That is now, as I as we put light on these topics, when we put light on these topics and we welcome and embrace all of these scattered pieces of ourselves, that's the healing. That's the healing right there. So I send you all so much love. Um, please comment. Let me know of your own experience. Did you resonate with any of this? Um, are you a motherless daughter or, are you, or were you an unmothered daughter? Is there a mother wound? Did you not have children out of choice and still feel somehow maybe you're left out of the left out of the circle of motherhood or you wanted kids and you didn't get to have kids and you feel the ache of your heart still. Um, and, and, and speak to you also, where have you met that ache? Like for me, I always say I am a mother because a lot of my um, clients are young, younger women. And I feel my heart expanding all the time to love and, and nurture them. And uh, I would often say that um, I've never birthed anyone out of my uterus, but I've birthed many people out of my heart. So find where you, you wanted kids and you don't have them, where you can mother, whether it's your pets or your family, your friends, um, or, you know, there's so many ways to share that nurturing love out in the world and it's needed so much. Um, so, and for those who have lost a child and, Again, in whatever way that has happened for you, um, the death of a child, a miscarriage, an abortion, I have great, great compassion for you. May you have great compassion for yourself. Honor yourself. Honor your journey. And, you know, I love this quote. I included it. I was going to share it, that, that there is no footprint too small to leave an imprint in this world. And so I... I love that there's no footprint too small to leave an imprint on this world. You know, again, whether you miscarried or the baby 
the pregnancy was ended, that connection was there. I know, I've talked to a lot of women and that imprint is there. And the honoring of that imprint and that connection um, is shrouded unless you do your healing. Uh, and unless you clear any guilt or regret or however the death occurred, um, you're missing out on that love connection. You're missing out on um, honoring honoring that footprint in your heart, in your being, in your life. Okay. <laughs> I think I have to go cry some more. There's just so much stirred up for me today, and I have no doubt stirred up a lot in you. Please reach out for support if you need it. Send me a private message if that feels more comfortable for you. You can email me at um, soulvisioning at gmail.com. Soulvisioning. Or this is easier since this is my channel. I have a new email, which is the soul nurturer at gmail.com. That's easier. All right. Sending you all so much love. Please hold yourself with compassion and acceptance and your own mothering love. All right. Peace be with you until next time. Thanks for being with me.